Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday's edition of the vlog. Hope you're having a fantastic week. Certainly I'm here, very, very busy as always, working on the CBTV Australia episodes, so we're editing those, pushing them out, and we have obviously had that promo video that went out of James Big Dog for a thousand invertebrates. Now let me know how you think that, that went because we do have the Wollongong Reptile Expo that episode being launched this Sunday so be sure to check that out at 6 p.m. on Sunday so that is going to be the first episode of CBTV after the pilot of course so from there we're going to have people like Luke's Reptile Kingdom, we're going to have Luke Huntley, the Noosa Snake Catcher, we're going to have a few other ones like Reptile Rehab Queensland and few of the other ones that we've got in the works so it's going to be quite a good series and I'm definitely looking forward to sharing those experiences with you but for now we'll focus on the vlogs at hand and I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the wonders, the spotted and of course the, the jag that I uh, wasn't expected to have any eggs so we'll start off with the wonders. So as you can see with the male wormer he is quite inquisitive starting to warm up a bit here of course so the ambient temperature is going to be a lot warmer than the last few days, weeks, and even months. So what I've noticed with him is he is still quite a prolific breeder, which is a good thing to have, especially with the woman python, because they seem to just go and go and go. But the thing that I'm looking at here is, I know you'd be a, definitely be able to see the change in the female right there, especially up in this midsection here. So we've got pretty much from here, I would say there's eggs from there, coming all the way down, and then here's her tail here where it starts to get quite large. So I don't want to disturb her too much, but you can see how good is that? So that's a good, I'd say one, two, three, four, at least five eggs again, which is fantastic. And we've still got them paired together, which is a good thing as well. And we, you never know, we might end up getting a couple of other sneaky eggs in there uh, with this male since he's still breeding quite well. So you can see that scale separation there is a perfect indication of the Woma containing eggs. So it's a great thing to see that scale separation compared to the upper part of her body, where it's obviously, you can see that it's quite together compared to over here where it's got your white skin, which generally means it's a stretched skin, which obviously indicates either a large prey item or in this instance, it is eggs. So it's fantastic to see that, especially in our Woma python, because she is a great mum. She did, last, she did really well last time, which is a good thing. And we're happy to be able to say that we're gonna have some woman pythons again to incubate. Here, of course, we have the spotted pythons and there's the male on the top here, of course, with its with the darker coloration. And he's, he's again quite active, like the male Woma. So again, touching on the ambient temperatures in the garage, it gets quite warm in here and obviously gets quite cool when it's cold. So it's good to see that they're still pairing up a bit. I actually did, witness them locking the other night which is fantastic because the more locking the more eggs you're going to have so it doesn't seem like they've got anything going on at this present moment but you can definitely see and i've noticed the last few weeks is the fact that she's got a lot more going on around here so there's a lot more uh i guess you say growth for this female which is good to know and i've definitely noticed it around this area here so it's getting quite plump around that area so I'm definitely going to say that she's got some eggs, but it could still be in the developmental stage. But this male, of course, is quite ready to go. He's, he's still he's very warm today, which is good. So they're getting a decent amount of heat. Um, but other than that, these guys are a, a project that I've been working on uh, for a couple of seasons now, growing them up from hatchlings and, of course, looking for that albino spotted python this season. So it's going to be great to see if they can produce some eggs for us and then I'll be able to incubate them and go from there. Last but not least, we have the Diamond Cross Coastal Jag. And it's quite hard to tell with this guy because he is on top of her at the moment, which doesn't necessarily mean that they're going through that uh, mating cycle. So it's quite hard to get a good grip, but you can see with the Woma Python, they had that same white coloration on the scale. So that generally means quite a a stretch skin so I'm going to say especially in that area right there where I'm zooming in now I can notice a, a decent sized lump so I want to say that there's some eggs in there um, whether it's fertile whether it's infertile I'm not too sure but it'll be good to see either way um, hopefully we do get some babies from this because this will be the first time I've bred carpet pythons and had the female go through the gravid state 
um, and do the prelay, which I'm hoping that that was a prelay when I when I documented it. Um, and it'd be good to see with especially the diamond because Buddy is looking real good at the moment. Um, so it'd be good to see that the diamond cross coastals work. I'm not really much of a, a cross breeder, so to speak. Um, this was just more of a, a test to see if Rose was ready to breed, and it seems to be that she is ready. So we'll be able to next season hopefully pair her with. Um, this lovely boy up here, Hades. So, a jag cross jag pairing, as people know, are quite um, lethal in, in the sense of the gene um, not being completed to its full degree, where the, the leucistic or super form in the jag uh, is, is a lethal gene and it kills that baby. But every other one, like there's the sibs and the jags, they tend to, to live quite well and have been bred for many, many years now. So, it'd be good to breed them anyway and see, you know, try the luck. Um, it's part of the game really, but it'd be good to see um, hopefully next season anyway. So for those of you that don't know what the Spotted Python breeding project is for us this year, um, we tried last year as well and it's a, a an albino Spotted Python project. So basically an al the albinism gene is present with these two pythons, obviously not a visual sign. So they are a, they're deemed 100% het, so they both carry the gene for albinism. Which means basically if you breed these two together, which I've done, you will get a 1 in 4 chance of obtaining that albino spotted python. And the other 3 out of that will be 66% hats. 2 out of those 66% well, hats will be 100% hats. And the other one will just be a normal spotted python. But because we can't tell the difference visually whether it's a carry of the gene or not, we deem them as 66% hats. So basically what would happen is if you are looking to get into a, 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 a cheap way of getting into an albino project like this, you would buy a group of the 66% heads, maybe like um, a couple of females, maybe three or four females and a couple of males, and then just swoop, swap around, mix and match, and try try luck with a few different um, males and females, and hopefully you can prove that out as being, at least one of them being a carrier of the gene. So it would be a good thing in a sense to, to get in there in a cheap way. Um, other people do what I've done and they get the 100% hats. And of course other people just get the albino straight up and breed it to either a normal to produce 100% hats or they get an albino and 100% head and then they get an albino straight out of the clutch with 50-50 being albino and a carry of the gene at 100% head. So there's a bit of genetics there for you which sort of rattles my brain at times but it's good to know uh, especially if you're going into those genetic breeding programs, it's good to have a bit of a, a look around and ask a few questions to people to see what you can produce with certain pythons. But for that, I'm going to end it here and maybe even touch on a genetic sort of masterclass in a way from what I know and my experiences breeding with the snakes that I have and give you a bit of an insight anyway. I'll end the vlog here though and hopefully have a fantastic weekend. Definitely check out CBTV Australia on Sunday at 6pm for the Wollongong Reptile Expo episode and it's going to be episode number one. So be sure to check that out. Hit, hit the subscribe button over there and of course don't forget to subscribe here. Hit that like button for us. Hit the notification bell and I'll see you on Monday.